Hello everybody and welcome to the fifth part of section four. In this part, what we're going to be talking about is how do we actually pull data from an XML document. So this is our example of an XML document, which is also hosted on a URL, which we'll visit. Now, like I was saying before, a lot of your XML documents are going to be actually RSS feeds that contain data that you want to parse. So in order to parse information online, there's a lot of things that you could do. First, you could just, you know, visit this, this content, store it all in a string, and use split operations, and get everything in between. And that would be pretty simple, because these tags are pretty simple. But one of the easier things that we can actually do is use Beautiful Soup. And so Beautiful Soup is a Python module that is geared towards all things web scraping. Okay, and by scraping, we mean pulling data offline. Now, again, just another warning, legally, scraping data may or may not be legal in your case. So definitely pay attention to the terms of service and also copyright law and fair use and make sure that you're not in violation of anything. So with that, let's go ahead and get Beautiful Soup. So like Beautiful Soup is a lot like uh, torrenting programs, right? So you can do a lot of really cool stuff with torrent programs. So you can put up stuff that you do own. You can disperse content that you own or you want people to have. But you can also use torrenting programs to download illegal movies and stuff. And it's so easy to do it that it almost doesn't feel like a crime. And basically the same thing with Beautiful Soup, that Beautiful Soup's capable of a lot of really cool stuff. And we can do a lot of cool stuff with it. But we can also commit crimes really simply with it. So you do want to be careful. So anyways, to get it, we're going to use pip to install as usual. So this is pip install and then capital B, beautiful, and then capital S, soup, and then four. And I already have it, so I'm not going to hit enter, but hit enter and install that. Now, once you have that downloaded and installed, really, this will just do both of those for you. You're done there. We'll leave this up because we're going to kind of check and make sure everything is working, but I'm going to put it over here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to head on over to our script here. And to use Beautiful Soup, since we downloaded Beautiful Soup 4, the module is BS4. And really we want to import Beautiful Soup from it. So what we're going to type is from BS4, import, and then B-E-A-U, beautiful soup, and that's it. Now we also want to make a request because we're going to at least request the raw data. So Beautiful Soup, it can access the internet, but we are all, usually people are just going to use URL lib for this. So we'll say import URL lib dot request. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to say the request is equal to URL lib dot request dot URL open. And then this URL is going to be this one. So I guess I'll type it in because you guys might have to type it in with me. So. It will be HTTP colon slash slash www dot N-A-T-I-O-N-A-L journal dot com slash politics question mark RSS equals one for true. Okay, so there's your link or your, your request that you want to make. Then we'll use beautiful soup to actually execute the request. So we're going to say XML because that's what we're basically returning information to. So XML is going to be equal to B-E-A-U to full soup. And then in the parameters here, we want to use the request. And then we're telling Beautiful Soup that, hey, by the way, this is XML information. Otherwise, Beautiful Soup will default into believing this is HTML data. And XML is very different than HTML. So you'll want to put in XML. Now, from here, it's pretty simple. What we're going to do is we're going to say for item in XML dot find all, capitalize the second letter, camel casing here, find all, and then in here, you put the tag that you're interested in. So coming back to here, uh, we have things that are in item tags. So each item is a new article, and then everything within that item is you know, something else. So let's say we want everything in between item, colon, and then let's just print item. Okay, so we'll save and run that. And then so what we got are basically everything within the item tags, but this is, you know, still a lot of data. What if we're just after the links? Okay, so what we could do instead is link, right? 
And now we can save and run that. And then here, all we got is you know all of the link stuff, right? That's your link there. This is the original link though. So we don't actually interested in the first element, but then everything after that, we are actually interested in. So what could you do to like ignore the first link? Well, you could come over here and for item in xml.findall link and then do square brackets one onward so we're just going to ignore the first element there and there you have it you know you don't have that annoying first one cool so you can do stuff like that and so we can get everything but obviously for our purposes we're interested in visiting links so we're going to go ahead and make use of you know the link parameter that we pulled now, first of all, what you may have noticed is we have links, but they're within these link tags. So a tag is just anything between these little, you know, brackets, basically, or greater than or less than signs. And so to reference just the stuff, like without the tags, what you can do is item and then dot text. Okay, so then we can save and run that again. And now we have the links. So at this point, we have everything we need to basically make you know, we've got the, the RSS feed, we can access the RSS feed, and then now we actually have the links in the RSS feed, and we already know how to visit links. So, I mean, now to start going to these articles, in fact, these two are RSS still. So, you know, let's see, two, let's do three colon. Let's try to see if this, hopefully now, yeah, okay. So these are the links that we want to visit. So we already know how to do this. So let's go ahead and, and just do it. So for item in XML.findAll, print item.text. Well, instead of printing it, let's just say URL equals item.text. And then we can do the URL lib dot request dot URL open. And then we want to open that URL. And then uh, we will do dot read. And let's just assign this to a variable. We'll say uh, news equals. And then we can print news. Okay. And uh, just so we can separate some stuff, we'll do 20 times the pound sign. Awesome. So now let's save and run that. Wait for it. And there, there's at least one page there splitting. And then we're going to another page. Now I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Close out of that because uh, that's a lot of data and the idle output is somewhat laggy as soon as you start you know stuffing a bunch of stuff into there so we'll go ahead and uh, skip that part but anyways there's how we were doing it so we're actually in the rss feed getting the links and visiting the website and pulling all the source code so later what we can do is actually start pulling information from that source code so anyways uh, that's what we'll be doing soon although in the next section what we're going to be actually talking about is, you know, the structure of HTML and how all that kind of works. And then we'll come back to this and actually start pulling information and all that. So anyways, stay tuned for all of that. And thanks for watching.